boys and girls, I think we should talk about snare drums, don't you think? I think so. We have talked about kick drums, but snare drums are way more complex for several reasons. It's more difficult to capture the entire character of a snare drum. You need more microphones, you need a good room, you need good overheads. It's not only the closed mics. With kick drums, it's mostly closed mics in metal. They are more difficult to tune. There are more variations, more sound options actually. Whereas the metal kick drum is more about and click, as I have told you. So more difficult to tune, more difficult to record, but also more difficult to mix because snare drums are a lot more dynamic than kick drums. So what I'm saying is, uh, I could talk all day about snare drums and there's way too much to say for a single YouTube video. So today I'm gonna concentrate on two things. First of all, I wanna show you how I treat my raw snare drum microphones to make them sit in a mix, to make them mix ready. And I wanna show you the most organic and natural way to add samples. And I'm not talking about adding your favorite Steven Slade or Toon Track samples and replacing your own snare drum. Now, th those libraries sound great, don't get me wrong, but that's not what I do. I will show you how to create your own snare samples from your own session and blend them that means you are extremely flexible to blend them in many different ways and it will always sound more natural than anything else. So what we got here is a session I mixed a few months ago and that is a young band, an unsigned band, local band, playing some kind of modern metalcore and those guys are called Bury My Regrets. And I want you to check them out if you like that kind of music, they deserve it. They have just released a video they sound like this. But today we're actually doing another song that is even unreleased, but a great tune if you ask me. It sounds like this. So that sounds nice. That is a modern metal sound, but still kind of organic if you ask me. We recorded the drums here at the Room of Boom over there and we had a lot of fun. Those guys are great. All right, let's have a listen to the drums soloed. They sound like this. Let's have a look what we got here. Let's start with the overheads. They sound like this. And you can hear, they sound pretty nice, but there's no kick drum. And that is because we used a MIDI kick. So there was no real kick drum in the room. He just played a pad. And you can hear that there's a lot of snare on the overheads. I don't low cut my overheads that much because they are a part of my snare sound. Then I've copied the overhead track and have compressed it heavily. Sounds like this. and mix it in, so that's my parallel compression. Let's add the snare mic. Then there's another bottom snare mic. We got some toms, sound like this. And hi-hat, we got a China. The China is only playing in this part. Sounds nice and dirty. And this is my hardware bus compressor, compressing the entire drum kit with parallel compression. And finally, we got a room track. 
heavily compressed and the MIDI kick. But we want to talk about the snare drum. So let me first of all turn off all the plugins on both the snare drum track and on the snare drum group. So the main snare drum track sounds like this. That sounds pretty good, right? I can't say it often enough. Make sure to get things right at the source with a great sounding snare drum, a good drummer and a good tuning. You know, that guy's hitting the snare very consistently. That also helps. Okay, what do we need to do? I can hear quite a lot of cymbal bleed here. And the first plugin I'm using is this one. It's a cheap plugin called Deep Bleeder from Wilkinson Audio. And you should get it, it's great, because what you basically do is you just tune in the fundamental frequency of the snare, then you define a threshold, so it's picking up all the snare hits, even the quiet ones, and then you just dial in the amount of reduction you want, and it sounds like this. And before it sounded like this. That really helps. All right. The second plugin is also rather functional, and that is Drum Leveler. This one is riding your snare drum fader, so to say. So it's making the quiet hits louder. And we don't need it a lot here because this guy is actually hitting things hard and consistently. But let's have a listen. It's not doing anything. Maybe here. Here you can see all the orange hits are being brought up so they have roughly the same level like the louder hits. So this is another way of compressing without any artifacts. There's also an inbuilt noise gate here. This one. That furthermore helps to make the track sound cleaner. So let's just bypass those two plugins again. Things sound a lot more clean and usable now, as you can hear. So let's add the first plugin that actually changes the sound. And this is Pro MB from Fat Filter, a dynamic EQ. And I really like dynamic EQs on drums. What I can hear in this snare drum is a certain hung, hung, honkiness, some ringing in the lower mids. And I can address that pretty easily with a dynamic EQ. The reason is I don't want to take out the frequency all the time. I want to have the original attack of the snare, and then when the ringing starts, I want the dynamic EQ to remove that frequency. Then we have another band here, which is just boosting the fundamental of the snare, just adding some more punch. And you can see this one is fast, and this one here is a lot slower. Nice. Next plugin is one of my favorite EQs on snare drum, and this is the Pultec EQ, but not the normal one you can see down here, but the Pultec mid-range equalizer up here. This is the UAD version. And the cool thing is you can use both those bands here, one to add punch and the other one to remove some honky mids. The 200 Hertz band here can be used to add punch. And we'll make every thin snare a lot thicker. So this was obviously too much, but let's go back down here. And then you can remove some honkiness, either around 500 or 700 with that dip band here. And if you crank that, it almost sounds like an 80s drum sample. With no mids at all. And then, of course, you can add some highs. That's what the Pultec is famous for, but we don't need to do that here. Finally, we have a transient designer doing what it should do, adding attack and removing a little sustain. So let's have a listen to that snare track together with the overheads.
Sounds nice. I do have another snare track. Sounds like this. It's the bottom snare mic. Same thing here, quite some bleed from the cymbals. But here I do something different. I have once again loaded Pro MB, a dynamic EQ, but this time I'm removing, what is it, 15 dB of highs. And each time the snare is hit, this band will open up again. Have a look and have a listen. Pretty smart, right? Second plugin is the Transient Designer once again, but here it's doing the exact opposite thing. We're removing the attack and adding some sustain because that's what I want from a bottom snare microphone. I want the sizzle of the wires. Let's have another listen together with the overheads and the main snare mic. Pretty good snare sound, right? But we want more. This is modern metal. And this is where I start playing around with samples. Now I have to explain what I do. With every drummer in every session, before we record the first song, when we have found our sound, our snare tuning and have mic'd the snare and things sound fine, I will let him give me a lot of snare samples. I will record several velocity stages, five to 10. So we start with ghost notes and then he will give me some harder hits, harder again, harder again, harder again. So I have the whole range from quiet to very loud. And he can use his left and his right hand and he will give me a lot of single hits. And I'm recording with all the microphones. That gives me a lot of opportunities later to create samples. And on each stage, I will have two hits. You can call them left, right, or A, B, or one, two, doesn't matter. But this is important to make sure you don't get any machine gun effects on faster fills. And I'm most of the time doing three different channels as well. So the direct samples, the overhead samples, and the room samples. That makes mixing very flexible. It almost feels like opening up Easy Drummer or something where you can also control the room and the overheads separately. I will show you in a minute what you can do, but let's open up the session and I show you how I cut the files. So here you can see the session with the samples. So this is one take and I have three tracks. This is the close mic track, this is the overhead track, and this is the room track. And he started with playing very soft hits and got louder and louder. Overheads, room. And for each dynamic level, I wanna have two samples. So this is my softest sample. You see, I've bounced them and they're they're called closed snare drum, ghost note one and ghost note two, two hits. Same thing for the overheads and same thing for the room again. So we end up with seven velocity switches. That means seven dynamic stages, two hits per stage, three microphone setups, closed mic, overheads and room. That means we end up with 42 samples for this snare. But one thing is very important. You have to make sure all three samples start at the same time, which is here. I usually go two samples before the snare drum hit on the close mic. And you want to keep the natural relationship between those three tracks. You can see this is the close track, then the sound arrives at the overhead tracks and it finally arrives at the room tracks. And that's how you want to bounce them. So you start bouncing right here. That way the natural relationship in time and phase between those three tracks stays intact. The main work is to find those 14 hits here that sound good, then to cut them out and to bounce those 42 files in this case and give them names and then to re-import them in to any kind of sample player. From there on, it's just fun. You create a MIDI track and you're ready to go. So this is the sample player I use. It's very old, but you can use whatever you want. It just needs to be able to load WAV files. And you can see here, we have the snare drum direct, left and right, snare drum overhead, snare drum overhead, room and room. And here we have 
the different velocity layers from hard to soft. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, actually. So left hand, right hand, left hand overhead, and room. And now I can have them on separate faders inside Cubase. So I have the original microphones and I have those three faders, direct mic, overhead and room. And I can control the room, the overhead amount and the punch of the snare separately from my main room mics, where I will also have a lot of symbols, of course. So let's do that now. Now you have to create a MIDI track from your snare drum. You can see it here and make sure it's very accurate. And I have the left hand on one MIDI note and the right hand on the other MIDI note. And you can just randomly switch between those two MIDI notes. So this is one hand and this is the other. You should make sure that the dynamics of this track follow the original. You have to go through all the velocity values of each hit and you should make sure you follow the original. On a part like this, on a halftime part, you can just have everything on 127, full power. But on the fills or on quieter parts, you need to be more dynamic as well. So have a listen to this. So you can hear all the different dynamic samples here. And I tried to follow his natural groove here again. Because remember, you don't want to work against the drummer, you want to support him. You want to blend those samples in a natural way and just make him sound a little larger than live. Let me solo the snare drum microphones and we will start adding samples. Let's go. So this is the direct sample, adding a lot of punch and making the snare even more consistent. Overheads. Let's add the room. And now depending on what you need, you can just add a touch of room, you can add the ultimate punch, you can do a lot of things. For example, if you crank the highs on the overhead mics, that is a very natural way of making the snare wires louder and brighter. Concentrate on the snare wires. All I do here right now is cranking the highs on the overhead snare samples. And I feel it makes the snare sound more natural, like it sounds in the room where I can hear the wires a lot more. And it sounds more natural and less artificial compared to the bottom snare mic. Let's keep that, sounds nice. Let's find a good balance for the samples and listen in the mix. I, I won't hang on down. Now the samples are too loud, but you can hear that they really add another dimension, make the snare sound more roomy, more Hollywood in a way. Let's bring them back a little bit. That sounds like a good balance. I will route all those snare tracks, natural and samples, to one snare drum group. And I have two more plugins here. The first plugin is this one. It's a compressor, just making the snare sit a little better in the mix. Make a 
And then we have another instant of Pro MB Dynamic EQ. This time we're boosting the highs because I felt like I want that snare a little more in my face. Why Dynamic EQ? Because I don't want to boost the cymbal bleed once again. And that really helps the snare to cut through the mix. The cool thing about this technique is that you can blend in the samples in millions of ways. You know, you can add more punch, you can add more room, you can add more sizzle to the wires or do any combination. You can automate those tracks. Sometimes you might need the ultimate punch and then there are other parts where you don't need samples at all. And it will always blend in in a natural way a lot more natural compared to any commercially available samples. And the second advantage is, it's your sound. You're not gonna sound generic. And that's why I do this. I will only use those samples on this session because I don't wanna repeat myself all the time. And that makes things a little more interesting compared to always using your favorite Stephen Slate snare on every production. So on your next drum session, make sure to record your own drum samples. Do it in the beginning when the snare is still in tune, before you are tired and make sure to record a lot of drum samples. So you got a lot of material and are flexible in the mix. And think twice before you open any VST instrument and before you use any other samples, because that might make your production sound more boring. This way you sound more unique and less generic and that will help you and help your drummer it's just a fun thing. Don't forget to check out the band, Bury My Regrets. Like I said, they deserve it. I will put some links down there to their video on YouTube and what else, to their socials and stuff so you can follow them. That would be cool. Thank you very much. I also want you to follow this channel, to ring the bell, ding dong. I want you to drink more beer, become more satanic, follow me on my socials. Is that too much? No, you, you can do that. You can also subscribe to my email list because I have already done that and I will be doing that. Some private videos just for the buddies on my email list, you know. Uh, they are called Beer with Cola and they're cool. I, I'm going to do one next week, I guess. So you better subscribe to my email list and leave a comment and tell me if you like this technique of creating your own samples, if you like my mix or not. Uh, let me know what you want me to do in the future and please share the videos. That really helps. If you're on Facebook, share the video. Tell people, hey, there's this weird bald German dude talking about boom boom and, and stuff like that. Share it. People will love it, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye bye.